one of the big changes that we've had to make as an organization is to meet students where they are often, you know, learning from home. Maybe they don't have a Microsoft Office installation at home. Maybe they're working on a low cost device like a Chromebook. So we needed to come up with a solution that worked in all educational environments, including from home, where students might not have access to those devices or software licensing. So Jasper Active MOS Online is truly a game changer because it requires no installation. It uses web apps online, which I'll be able to show you, and it's an add-on within web apps. And the best part is there's no administrative rights required or anything like that. This is something that anyone can go into and get access to instantaneously. So I'm going to go into a deep dive about what the product looks like. As Hannah said, towards the end of the presentation, we'll open it up for questions. I'm happy to answer any questions that come my way um, and I encourage them. But before we do that, I just want to show you how easy it is to get the Jasper Active app installed in your Office web apps. So if you have access to Office web apps, basically you can just um, access them online. There's an area where you can install an add-on. You go to the insert tab on the ribbon. There's an add-on button and you search the Microsoft store for Jasper Active. You'll see the J come up just like you see on your screen here with a little get icon. You click that and it will automatically be embedded into your Office web apps. Once again, requiring no installation and no administrative rights to get access to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to close out of my PowerPoint here. And I'm just going to bring this over. Okay, so you should all be able to see my web apps version of Word here. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what Jasper Active looks like in uh, the online version. First, I just want to show you once again how easy it is to get the application installed. So essentially, you're just going to click the insert tab on the ribbon. You're going to click the add in buttons. And then you'll search the office store for Jasper Active. You'll see the J icon. You click that and it will embed itself directly into your web apps. So as you can see, I already have it here. It just shows up as an icon on the ribbon. So let's go ahead and just refresh my screen and then I'm gonna click on the icon. So you'll see Jasper Active just opens up in a pane on the right hand side here. It says, welcome to Jasper Active MOS Online. And it gives us a breakdown of the types of exercises that we're going to experience in Jasper Active. So some of you may already be familiar with our uh, current version of Jasper Active, the install version. Um, you'll notice that the Jasper Active MOS Online follows a similar learning path. So we start with a benchmark exam. And essentially what that is, is an assessment to find out what you know, and more importantly, what you don't know. So you'll receive a series of questions, uh, with a timer attached to them, and you'll just basically do your best to answer those questions. From there, Jasper Active analyzes your results and prescribes learning to you. Now, we believe in learning by doing, so the exercises are broken into two different formats. There's basic exercises which have you working right in web apps, so you're clicking around like a live version of web apps um, until you get to the answer. And then you move into the advanced exercises, which are interactive exercises, and I'll show you what those look like. From there, you move into the Create Project, which is a project that students can take offline if they'd like, or they can do it live in web apps. And they are uh, required to complete a certain number of objectives. When they finish completing that document, they simply come back in, submit it, and it's automatically graded. Of course, all of the progress in Jasper Active MOS Online is automatically graded. And there's a learning management system for educators where you could log in, you can track your student progress, you can run reports, all that stuff, which I'll be able to show you as well. And then the final step of Jasper Active MOS Online is a summary assessment. So this is an assessment at the end of all of the learning. Um, this is basically to ensure that the student has learned as much as possible through the learning steps of Jasper Active and is prepared to apply that in a real world example of a document they would create in an office space. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna click the get started button here. And you'll notice that a login window opens up. If you have an existing Jasper Active account, you can log into it here. 
If you don't, all you have to do is just click new user register here. The registration process is very straightforward. You can see you can come in as either a learner or a student or as an educator or instructor. I'm going to click learner or student. It asks you for your date of birth. So let's just throw in a date of birth here. And then you can either sign up with your email or if you have a Google Plus account, a Microsoft account, a Facebook account, you can log in with those as well. So we have single sign on capabilities. I'm going to sign up with my email here. And then we just basically fill out a profile. So our first name, last name, the username we want, the email address associated with it. We choose an avatar at the end. We enter a study code, which is something that our instructor provides for us. And then we go to the next step, which requires us to just agree to some terms and conditions. And then we're in. It's very simple and straightforward for the registration. It takes about two minutes. I'm going to log into an existing account that I created earlier today. And just takes a moment here to load. And now you can see on the right hand side, it says, hello, Curtis, welcome to Jasper Active, happy learning. And we have all of our different steps listed here. So we have the benchmark, we have the interactive lessons, we have the create project, the summary assessment, and also our ebook. Now you'll notice that the lessons create project and summary assessment are all locked. This is because we need to go through the benchmark exam first to find out what we don't know so that Jasper Active can then prescribe learning to us based on our performance. The ebook, however, is open. So if I wanted to click the ebook link, it's actually going to open up a new window. I mentioned earlier that we're a courseware publisher, so we develop content that's directly aligned to the Microsoft Office Specialist Certification exams. Of course, Jasper Active MOS Online is also aligned to those exam objectives. And this is the curriculum that we've developed. So if you wanted to read through a lesson first before actually tackling the hands-on exercises, you can see our ebook is directly embedded. So you can read through the appropriate section or if you wanted to the whole book before going into the exercises. That scrolling, by the way, that's happening on screen is automatic. So when you click on a particular topic like using the ribbon, screen will automatically scroll down to that section of our ebook. We can also access that at any point throughout the learning, and it does present itself giving the opportunity to read the section before doing the exercise. But if you want to reference the whole book, you simply click the ebook icon there. So let's take a look at the benchmark exercise. So you can see we've got 30 minutes here. It says in this benchmark, you will apply your skills to create a simple report containing some recipes. The required resources will be provided uh, to you to complete this document. If you don't know how to do a task, just skip it and go on to the next one. You can also return to the question as much as time permits. The maximum time to complete this is 50 minutes. You do have the, uh, the ability to adjust that, by the way, on the back end, which is why it says 50 right now. But I've adjusted it for 30. And then it says, happy learning. So let's go ahead and get started. So it's going to pull up a template document for me. You can see that here. My tasks are now listed on the right hand side. So uh, I've got my 30 minute timer counting down. I can see I have 20 questions. Some of these will have one step. Some of them will have multiple steps. And uh, of course, again, I'm working live in web apps. So I can click around anywhere in here until I find the answer. So let's look at the first step here. Clear the formatting for the entire document. So I'm going to click on styles and clear formatting. Step two, select the easy chicken pot pie recipe title and apply the heading one style. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to apply the heading one style. There we go. All right. So we're going to scroll down and head to our next task. So use the format painter. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these for you guys. I think you get the idea. But basically, this is going to automatically grade. And when I submit, it's going to give me my results, which we'll see momentarily. So I'm just going to skip through the remainder of the exercises. And click Finish to submit. Of course, if you run out of time first, your uh, benchmark assessment will be automatically submitted. Uh, in this case, you can see my results have appeared on screen. So uh, it tells me I answered the first question correctly. We know that because I went through and did it. All the other ones are going to be incorrect, of course. You'll see that there's a book icon here. This opens up that section of the ebook. 
So what I love about this is I'm sure you've all had this experience before. I know that I have when taking an exam or an assessment or anything like that. Of course, there's always going to be a little, uh, a little bit of anxiety during that experience. So by when you answer a question or when you go to answer a question, if you struggle, uh, if you know it's something that you've done before, you've used before, but you just can't remember in the moment because of the pressure of the, of the exam, where that particular uh, uh, um, a button is or anything like that, when you complete it and you submit it, you can click this ebook icon and it will immediately open that section of our ebook. So for those tasks that are like right on the tip of your tongue during the exam experience, you can come in here and immediately be taken to that. So you can think, okay, I remember how to do that for next time. Um, it's a really cool feature that I love because it takes you again right to that particular task. So I'm comfortable with my results. I'm going to click done and I'm going to go into my lesson plan. So now you can see the other sections have unlocked successfully. So let's look at our lessons. So here are all the different uh, lessons available in Word. So there's six in total and these will have, of course, multiple exercises within them. So the first one I'm going to click on is managing documents. Now you'll notice that as I'm on here, it has the basic exercises and the advanced exercises. So I indicated this um, at the top of the presentation, but basically there's two types of exercises. The basic exercises are the ones that you're working live in web apps. And then the advanced exercises are click through interactive exercises. I'm going to show you what both of them look like. So let's look at the first one here, learn to find text for further action. You'll notice once again, the ebook icon is here. So if I want to read that section before I go into the exercise, which if you're not familiar with that particular task, I would probably recommend. I simply click the ebook icon. Once again, it opens up for me. It takes me right to the appropriate section. I can read through that comfortably before I move into the hands-on exercise. So let's click on it. Learn to find text for further action. In this exercise, you will search for text in a three-page document. To help you determine why the document is so long, you will turn on the formatting marks and then search for a name. Start exercise. So another template document is opened up in front of me. Again, this is a live version of web apps. I can click anywhere in here and we're going to find a person. So once again, ebook icon, if I need to reference that says here, the document is three pages long and you want to see how it was set up. So step one on the home tab, click the more options button at the right side of the ribbon. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that right here. And you'll see there's a screenshot that indicates what we're looking at in the menu. Click show hide. Okay, let's do that. And then it says scroll through the document so you can see how a paragraph mark was entered between each person's information. Yeah, you can see that here. Perfect. You want to find the information for Andrew McSweeney, but you are not sure which page has the information. Instead of scrolling up and down in the document, use the find feature. On the home tab, click the find button. So we're on the home tab, let's click find. And then it says in the search field, type Andrew and press enter. So there we go, it took us to Andrew McSweeney. And it says, note, Word now displays a preview of any occurrences it finds, uh, excuse me, any occurrences it finds that matches in a list below the search criteria. In this instance, there is just the one. Notice how Word has automatically moved you to the location where this text can be found in the document. We see that here. This can be beneficial when you have multiple occurrences and you want to view the text before or after the occurrence to see if this is the one you want to find. Click the occurrence below the search field. Click in the document where the occurrence is to turn off the gray highlight. Word still keeps the search criteria highlighted in yellow. Okay, let's do that. There we go. To remove the search criteria, click the X at the end of the search criteria. So that's right here. We'll click that. And now it wants us to type Nick as the new search criteria and press enter. So we'll go back here. There we go. Close the search uh, task pane by clicking the X at the top right of the pane. So that's right here. We'll click that. And now we're done. So let's go to the next task. In this case, we only have that one for this particular exercise. So we're going to click finish. It gives us the green check mark saying, okay, we got that correct. We click done and go back to our lesson. 
So now you'll notice that this circle here beside the exercise shows up with a full green circle. That means we've answered, we've gone through this exercise correctly, we've answered everything correct. You'll notice our lesson progress has now been updated as well with 20% to completion. If I start one of these exercises and answer a couple of the steps correctly, but maybe I miss a few of them, this will show up with a green outline instead of a black outline, meaning that that particular exercise is in progress. So that's what a basic exercise looks like. It's again, automatically graded. It tracks your progress as you go through it. Let's go ahead and look at one of the advanced ones. So I'm gonna to go to a different lesson for this. I'm going to go to insert and format graphics. And I'm gonna choose the last one here. So learn to insert a screenshot and screen clip. Once again, our ebook icon is there if I want to click that and open it up and read through the section. In this case, I'm just gonna click on the exercise. And this is what the advanced exercise looks like. So learn to insert a screenshot and screen clip. In this exercise, you will look at how to capture a screen and then capture certain aspects of a screenshot image. So let's get started. It's gonna give us that introduction here at the beginning. And then it's going to pull up a screenshot and basically get us to click around until um, we answer the steps correctly on the right hand side. So here's our template document. So insert a screenshot, click view, click switch windows, click document five. So let's click view, switch windows, document five. Click the insert tab and click screenshot. Insert and screenshot. Click the children's party notice form image, which is the first option. Click file and then click close. Don't save. Step two, insert a screen clip. Click the insert tab, click the screenshot arrow and click screen clipping. So insert, screenshot, screen clipping. There we go. Watch as we draw a rectangle marquee around the green soul's logo to select this image. So that's happening on screen now. And now because I've gone through all the steps, it's gonna save and tell me that I've answered these correctly. It tells me that my progress has been saved so I can exit out of this. My progress will refresh and now you can see I've got the green circle there for that exercise, meaning I answered that correctly. My lesson progress once again is updated to show 17% on this particular lesson. So that's how the learning works in Jasper Active MOS Online. You have your basic exercises and your advanced exercises. Basic uses Microsoft Office web apps. As you saw, I can click around anywhere in that. And then your advanced are your interactive exercises, which are screenshots and click throughs until you get to the correct answer. You follow that process for all of the lessons and all of the exercises within Jasper Active MOS Online until you get to the create project. So that's the next step I'll show you here. So the create project is something that you can take offline if you'd like and work on and come back in and submit it another time, or you can do it all in one sitting if you prefer. But basically we're going to give you a project abstract with a list of different parameters that we want you to follow um, when creating this document. Now we do allow for some creative freedom. So you have the ability to, um, you know, create something that's interesting to you. We just want you to follow certain guidelines. So in this exercise, you will use your creativity and knowledge to solve a real world problem and then it gives you your instructions. All right, so when we're ready, I'm gonna click start. And now it's gonna give me a blank document. It gives me the project brief here on the right-hand side. So the specification says, you've been given the task of creating a report on how you can protect your online profile. Save the file as online profile. Your final report should include the requirements outlined in the following list. What is an online profile? Where can you set up online profiles? Protecting yourself while online, the list goes on. When I'm ready, I click, let's get started. And then here's my checklist. So now these are all of the things that I need to do when creating this document. So you must apply styles in the document to highlight important elements such as headings. You'll notice this doesn't tell me specifically what heading to use. That's because we want the student to have some creative freedom here. So again, it's a real world representation of a document they would create on their own without the step-by-step handholding. Uh, I really like to create exercise for this reason because the idea is we're gonna take all of the knowledge that we learned through the learning pieces and apply it in a document that is something that you know, we're interested in and it reflects our own creativity, but also is a professional document. So you would go through Curtis. It. Yes. Curtis, hi, sorry to interrupt. This is Bob Imhoff. 
Hey, well, you, we've had a lot of questions about people are trying to access the app right now. Would you just let them know that it's not available yet? There's... Yes, that's, that's great. Thank yeah. you. So Thank well, you very much. <laughs> I'm thrilled to hear that everyone is so excited. I probably neglected to mention that our release date for this is October 15th. So you guys are getting the world's first premiere of this. Um, it will be ready in about two weeks, at which point you'll be able to go in to the, uh, the Microsoft store and grab it. But if you're not finding it there right now, that's why. It's October 15th is the official release. Thank you for that, Bob. Okay, so back to the Create project. When I've gone through all of the different steps and pieces here, um, when I'm ready, I come in and click uh, complete project. It's going to automatically submit it and grade it. I'm just going to put some content here in the document just so we have something. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. And then when I'm ready, I click complete project. And it says, are you sure you want to complete this project? Yes. It's going to calculate and save my results. And there you go. So according to the, the text that I just copied and pasted here, we did get that one right. There's a couple in there we got right, a score of four out of 10. Uh, I'm going to click finish and now the create project has been complete. Of course, based on anything that I didn't include, I can go back in and try again. So I can go back in and edit my document again until I answered all of those correctly. And in fact, that's what I would recommend students do. We want them to try to get 100% on that. The next and final step of Jasper Active MOS Online is the summary assessment. So. In this assessment, you will apply your acquired skills to create a document about starting a band and, uh, and discusses the Beatles. The required resources will be provided to you to complete this document. All right, so let's get started. So another template is going to open up in front of us. This is once again another assessment. So we're going to see a 30 minute timer counting down here. We have 12 questions on this particular assessment. And again, some of them will have multiple steps. So let's look at the top of page one, edit the first sentence so that it begins with the word 20. Okay, that's right there. So let's go ahead and just delete the rest of this sentence or the beginning of it, I should say. There we go, we've done that. And then change the period at the end of the sentence to a colon. Okay, there's our period and oops. There we go. And we'll move on to the next task. So same thing here, you're gonna go through and answer all of these to the best of your ability. Hopefully you'll be able to answer all of them after going through the learning material. And uh, if you run out of time, it will be automatically submitted, but in most cases, you'll be able to finish it within the allotted time. I'm gonna click next all the way through just to skip to the end. And then finish. And it'll take just a moment here. And there you go. So we can see I have got my first task correct because that's the one I answered. All the others are, of course, incorrect. Again, I can reference the ebook. So once again, if there was something that I really stumbled on through the assessment, I can click the ebook afterwards to make sure that I get the answer, read it before trying again. I'm going to go back to my dashboard here. And once again, the next final thing that we can do is go back and reference the ebook at any time. So if at any point the student is uh, struggling or, you know, there's some extra review needed, they can go into that ebook, they can read the section, get 100% comfortable with it before going back into the exercise or even before going into the exercise at all, which ultimately I think is a good strategy, you know, reading that, that little bit of a section, maybe one or two pages before going into the hands-on piece. So that's the student side of Jasper Active MOS Online. I can't stress this enough. No installation required, no admin access needed, um, is 100% based in the browser, in web apps. Uh, it's truly revolutionary. We're very, very excited about it. Um, and we know that it's going to be an essential tool um, for the market this year. Students are learning in remote environments where they don't have access all the time to office licensing or the ability to install or even devices that can install like a Chromebook. So um, we're so excited to be sharing this solution with you guys. Again, the release date, October 15th. I'm going to jump in and show you the instructor side of this as well very briefly. So there's a learning management system built into this as well where teachers can control access for students, there's full reporting, there's resources and material to aid you in delivering in the classroom. So I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes showing you that and then we'll move into the Q&A. So 
So I'm going to go to the mos.jasperactive.com site for this. This is our existing Jasper Active site. So if you already are a Jasper Active customer for the install version, the learning management system for instructors is exactly the same. It's connected to the MOS online. So let's go ahead and log into my account. I'm just going to show you a couple of the key features here. So we'll talk about each of these just quickly. So um, the activity manager is something for the install version, basically where you can create some customized exercises, multiple choice quizzes, things like that. The groups manager is where you as the instructor can control access for your students. Um, not only that, so you create and control access for them but you can see all the students that are enrolled in a particular group. Um, you can see their progress. You can help them reset their passwords, which is incredible because students lose their passwords all the time. Um, and there's a number of other features you can do there as well, including changing the time limit on the benchmark assessment or the summary assessment at the end. So you have the ability to do that there too. The reports area gives you comprehensive reporting on student progress. The teacher resources, so we've created a ton of teacher resources for the classroom that includes lesson plans with recommended timing, uh, PowerPoint presentations to aid you if you are still in a traditional instructor led environment or maybe you're doing a, a webinar presentation through Teams or Zoom or Skype or something like that, you have the ability to use those there. Um, and then of course answer keys and things like that. There's a ton of resources available in there for you and I highly recommend downloading them. But I'm going to show you the groups manager and the reports area. Obviously, the installer isn't relevant here because Microsoft Office Online Jasper Active does not require an install. So let's look at groups manager. So I've created one group, which we can see here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that. Um, first, I'll just mention, actually, it's so easy to create access to this. All you have to do as an instructor is come in and hit add new group. Type in a group name, choose your existing license, choose a start date, a finish date, and then choose your course. And when you click save, a group key is going to be automatically generated. You provide that to your students and they can get in instantaneously. It's a 30 second process. So very, very quick. So I've got my group I've created ahead of time here. And I'm going to click on group students. So this is where you can see all the students that are enrolled in this particular group. Um, you can see they're all me. <laughs> they're all demo accounts that I've created and worked on here. Um, you can see immediately the score on the benchmark exam. Uh, so in this case, 5%. You can reset the benchmark for them here as well. So if a student wants to go back and try the benchmark again, you can check the box here, hit reset benchmark, and it will reset it for that student so they can try again. You see their name, their email address, when they started the course, when they're, uh, the, they're expected to finish based on the license expiration, the activation code they're using. The key icon here helps you reset the student username and password. The clock icon lets you change the time for the benchmark assessment and the summary assessment. Um, you can also change the rubrics, which is like the score weighting of each section. So if you decide you want the benchmark to only be worth 5% of a student's grade and the learning to be worth 75% of the student's grade and then the rest to make up um, the remaining percentages, you have the ability to do that. Uh, completely up to you and then that's reflected in the reports that you generate later on. So that's a groups manager. It's very easy to use. The reporting is awesome. It's, it's robust. It gives you really detailed information. So let's go ahead and just choose the group I have here. I'm looking at a progress report which shows me by student their individual progress. So I'm going to click the group that I have. Here's the three students that are enrolled. You can see their overall progress in the course is listed here their score on the benchmark assessment, their score on the create exercise, and their score on the validate exercise are all listed here, or the summary assessment, I should say. Um, all we have to do is click on those links and it's gonna open up a detailed report for us that'll give us a breakdown of all of the tasks they answered correctly and what they answered incorrectly. This allows us to, of course, address individual needs for students, but also identify some potential trends. Maybe there's a particular topic um, maybe it's inserting charts that students are struggling with. You have the ability to identify that here through the reporting. But we can get down even more micro. So if I click on one of my students, I can see by lesson what their progress is. So here's the six lessons in the course. I can see 40% here, 33% here, 0% on the others. And I can go even more micro than this. So 
If I click managing documents, it now shows me the individual exercises within that particular lesson. It tells me the percentage of correct marks that the students received in that exercise. How many times have they practiced? How many times have they gone back in? And it also gives me their last result. We'll also be able to see the time it took them to answer as well. That's something we're finalizing the integration on as we speak. So same thing, I can go down here and you can actually see the timing on these ones because these were for the advanced exercises. So you can see how much time did I spend in those interactive exercises. You could even go further and click on an individual exercise to see the number of tasks that were included and which ones the students answered correctly or incorrectly. So you can get really, really micro on this stuff. And of course, you can export this as well. So if you click the export view link there, it will take you to a, a report that you can generate into a PDF, and then you can export it out um, for the powers that be, for whoever you need to send that report to, or if it's for your own analysis and you wanna just try to identify if there's areas your students need to improve, you can do that there as well. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys. You can see the learning, uh, learning management system on the teacher side uh, is fantastic. It's an essential tool as well, um, but really, really excited to be able to share with you guys the first audience who gets to see this Jasper Active MOS Online. Happy at this point to take any questions you guys have. I, I imagine there are some in the chat. So um, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, Hannah, I don't know if uh, if you unmute people when they want to ask questions so they can do it orally or, so or I have actually been compiling them as we've gone along and we luckily ah. have some great support from CCI as well yes. going through and answering quite a few of these but just so everyone can see the answers I've compiled a few um, one of the questions that I received before the webinar started is can multiple teachers work with um, work with the same group of students to manage them preferably without students having to change the teacher link um, so the way that Jasper Active is set up, it's a great question. And obviously somebody that already uses Jasper Active. Um, so by default, students are linked to one teacher and that's because it's for the teacher that's created the group. Um, so if you wanted to have students um, reports, things like that to be accessible by multiple teachers for the same group, my recommendation would be that you create uh, a generic teacher account for Jasper Active. So, um, you know, it would be, you know, maybe it's by class. So it's, it's period A at, at you know, schooldistrict.com. And then you provide that to all the teachers that need to access it because whoever logs in with that particular login you've created would have access to that particular group for reporting purposes or managing purposes. So um, right now, technically it links to one instructor, but if you were to make that a generic account, then anyone could use it to access information on that group. It's a great question. Perfect. So the other question we had this come through a couple times is approximately how many hours of time do you expect the entire program to take to a new user? Great question. So um, the online version of Jasper Active MOS is a little bit more condensed than our install version. Um, it's, I would say it's a little bit more focused. Um, of course, both meet the exam objectives of the Microsoft Office Specialist Certification Exam. And my recommendation typically, and this can, of course, you know, vary depending on your audience, your demographics, um, but my recommendation typically is to allow 15 hours, uh, 15 to 25, I would say, per application. Specifically with Jasper Active MOS Online, I would say you're leaning towards probably the 15 hour mark for Word, the 15 hour mark for Excel, et cetera. Perfect. Okay, we had another question. Where is the student data stored so when they create their accounts? And can they provide pseudo information when they're creating their accounts? Um, the, the data, so uh, I don't know exactly where the data center is, but we use Azure. So um, it would be the, in terms of privacy, it would be on Microsoft servers basically, uh, if that's, if I'm understanding that piece of the question. Um, and then I, technically a student could create an account using false information, but they can't create an account unless you provide them with a group code or an access code. So um, they won't have access to the group unless you, you give it to them. And then of course you can manage that on the back end. So if you go in and manage your group and you see that John Smith has registered an account and there's no John Smith in your class, you can just remove them from the group. Great, perfect. Another question, after a student takes the benchmark exam, does it customize the learning plan for that student based on how they did on the exam? Yeah, great question. So um, the way the prescriptive learning works 
is the results that the student um, uh, receives from the benchmark exam is taken into consideration when the lessons are accessible. And so what happens is you saw when I completed a lesson or an exercise, I had that green circle, right? Um, if somebody has answered a section 100% correctly on the benchmark assessment, when they get to the learning material for that particular section, it will already show up with that green circle, indicating that they don't need to go through it in order to complete the lesson because they clearly already know how to do it. Perfect. Can each command be executed by menu, keyboard shortcut, and right click? And I'm assuming this is for the online version if they're working either on a Chromebook or a Mac. Yeah, it's another great question. So um, what we're measuring typically is the outcome. So yeah, I mean, there's many ways, of course, that you can um, do particular tasks in, uh, in Office or in any application. So typically what we're measuring is the outcome. So if we're asking you to copy and paste something, you can do it in any way. You can use a keyboard shortcut, you can use the ribbon, you can do whatever you like, right click, um, unless we specify otherwise. So if we say copy and paste this data using the keyboard shortcut, that's what we're measuring. If we don't indicate it, you can do it any way you'd like. Perfect. So I think you answered this question already, but can you change the time limit um, that's associated with a specific task or a specific assignment? So the time limit is only applicable to um, the, uh, the summary assessment and the benchmark assessment. There is no time limit during the actual exercises. And yes, you have the ability to, uh, to adjust those as you see fit. So in the teacher panel I was just showing you, uh, you have the ability to, to go in and adjust the, the timing. By default, we've set it to 30, but, uh, 30 minutes, but you can, you can change that if you like. Perfect. And then another question that came up, what is the duration of the license given to the, to the students? So how long will their access code work for? So um, it depends on the length of the license. So typically we provide annual licenses. Um, and so if you received your license on September 29th of, of 2020, uh, it would be active until September 29th of 2021. And when you create your groups, you can specify when that particular group expires based on the expiration of your license. So if you wanted it to last for the entire year, you would just set the same expiration of, of your license in this example, September 29th. Um, if you wanted it to only be for three months, you would just set the end date to whatever, what, whatever your preference was for that particular group. Perfect. Okay, and then one other question that came through, we have actually quite a few more, if that's okay, but one was if this will work on a Citrix platform. Um, so I'm not overly familiar with the intricacies of that to, to be able to appropriately answer that. I'm, I think our CTO is on a call and he might be able to jump in, but um, it, it would depend on the environment. I mean, again, because it's browser based, as long as, you know, if, if you're using like a thin client or something like that, as long as you have the ability to access um, a, a web browser and web apps, then, then technically yes. Perfect. Okay, so one other question is, um, Will this work for Office 365 and older versions, or is it just the most current version of 365 or the 2019? So right now it's for 365 and 2019 because it's uh, directly aligned to web apps, right? So, um, you know, obviously the web apps version is, is the latest version that Microsoft releases. So that's what we focused on for this particular release. But for Jasper Active, the installed version, um, that is available for Office 2013, Office 2016, and Office 2019-365. Perfect, okay. One other question coming through, can we control if students are required to do the benchmark or not and simply require 100% of the lessons? Or can we also control which lessons students are required to do regardless of benchmark results? So, um, the, the benchmark, you know, I wouldn't say it's mandatory, meaning that you have to put every single student through it. However, you did see that the other pieces didn't open up until I went through the benchmark. And the reason for that, of course, is again, the prescriptive learning piece doesn't kick in unless a student goes through the benchmark exam. So we have to bear that in mind. Um, that said, you know, if you felt like, hey, I don't want my students to have to go through a benchmark assessment, what I would ask you to do is just have them skip through it. Uh, just like I did in the presentation, I answered one question and then skipped through it. That would be the best way. In terms of um, controlling what exercises students have to go through, we have to be careful here because we want to make sure that we're covering all of the exam objectives for the certification exam. So, um, you know, if we open up the ability to like turn off an exercise, 
technically we're no longer aligned to the certification exam objectives. So we allow everything to be open. And if you decided for some reason that you wanted students not to go through a particular exercise, um, you would just instruct them not to go through it. If uh, you wanted them to go through everything, even if they answered the uh, something on the benchmark 100% correct and then it showed up correct in the lesson progress, same thing. You would just instruct them, hey, even though this shows up green, I want you to go through the exercise. And you can verify that in the reporting. You'd be able to go in and see very quickly um, whether or not they actually went into the exercise, how much time they spent, et cetera. Perfect. Okay, so we have some people who are obviously current Jasper Active customers and users. And so they're wondering if the online version tracking will mesh with those who already have Jasper Active installed. That's a great question too. I, I see a funny comment in there from Samantha Sanders about what happens if it's not a great question. <laughs> great question. So you guys, I love it. It's great. Um, uh, so the answer is the, the best way to think about this is that Jasper Active MOS online is like a separate course. So in the way that um, Word is its own course, Excel is its own course, PowerPoint is its own, its own course. Microsoft Office Specialist Online for Jasper Active for Word is its own course. So Word Online is its own course. So Excel Online is its own course. So the progress doesn't track between the two because they're separate entities. Um, that said, uh, for, for any existing customer, as you guys can probably see, hopefully you can see that slide there. Any existing customer that has the regular Jasper Active Microsoft Office site license, you get Jasper Active Microsoft Office online for free as an addition to your license. So depending on what your classroom setup looks like for this year, if it's all remote learning or primarily remote learning or some sort of hybrid, my recommendation would be that you use the Jasper Active MOS online piece because, or the online course um, and use that for your groups instead of the installed version, just because that way you're ensuring that students can access it from anywhere um, and they're not restricted. Wonderful. We've had a couple of questions to um, come through about the timeline for the expert exams, if you guys are planning on releasing any content related to those. So um, I don't have an answer yet on the expert side. Uh, we do have Excel and PowerPoint um, coming. I, I don't have an official release date just yet, but um, I, I'm expecting probably by the end of October or into early November. Um, the experts presumably would come after that, but I, I, unfortunately, I, I don't have a, a firm date or plan I can share with you at this time. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to be patient on that one. Okay. One of the other questions, since we have um, users joining us from all over the world, is if this platform will be available in different languages, particularly Spanish, was requested. Great question. Um, so uh, the Spanish. Spanish is something that, as you know, if you've used the installed version of, of Jasper Active, we have it available in Spanish. So um, presumably uh, that is, a, is something that would take place in the future. We don't have any concrete plans for it just yet because, of course, we're, uh, we're, we're working really hard to get this product out to market. Um, I should also mention, as I'm sitting here answering these questions, my, uh, my boss, my COO, messaged me and said, Word, Excel, PowerPoint are available October 15th. So uh, those three applications will all be available on launch day. Um, but in terms of the translation, it makes sense that we would do that next, particularly for Spanish. I just can't confirm uh, you know, a date or, or development time at, at this particular time. Perfect. So one other question is, if students are using a Chromebook, which I imagine quite a few of our attendees are in situations like this, and we had to install Office Extension to gain access to the programs, will the Jasper Active MOS Online work with um, that extension? Um, it would depend on the extension, I suppose, but I mean, the short answer is yes, like absolutely. Jasper Active MOS Online works with Chromebooks. We've tested it. Um, you know, the, the add-on can be installed there, no problem. So unless for some reason you had another extension or add-on that conflicted with it, um, it would work just fine. And actually that prompts me uh, for something else that I, I forgot to show in the presentation that I'm really excited about. One of the things I wanted to test internally was does Jasper Active MOS Online work with 
Immersive Reader from Microsoft. So for those of you that are familiar with Immersive Reader or perhaps not, um, it's basically a software that can read the screen aloud for a student, also highlights sections for um, students with, with some you know, reading challenges and things like that. It's a really, really awesome program. And I was able to test it out. And if you have the extension in Chrome, for example, for Immersive Reader, which is free, you can just download it easily, um, it works. It's so awesome. So it reads the questions directly to you, highlights areas. It's it's so awesome. So if you guys are using Immersive Reader um, uh, or you know have or have looked at it before, just know that it works and is fully compatible with Jasper Active MOS Online. Awesome. That's a great tip. Last question that we had was um, just I think a clarification. So Julie, thank you so much for asking this. So if we have teachers who are both teaching in class and virtual classes, would you recommend the online MOS Jasper Active or using the install in their actual computer lab? I would definitely recommend using the online version just because that way um, students can access it from anywhere. You know, if they started at the school and they want to continue at home, they can do it. The risk with doing the installed version is if they don't have Microsoft Office installed on their home device or they're using a Chromebook, or something like that, they wouldn't be able to continue their progress. So to ensure um, you know, equity among all students and the ability for, for all students to, to get in there and use it no matter what their environment is, I would definitely recommend the Jasper Active MOS online version I showed you today. Perfect. One more question just came through. Is there any variation in content for quizzing and exams? We just wanna make sure that there's a method to prevent students copying from each other. So today we just have, um, you know, the, the standard sort of stock exercises that are built in there. Um, so we don't have something in terms of like uh, randomizing exercises or anything like that. It's feasible that we could build that in the future. And especially as the program continues to grow, I imagine we would. Um, but I would say the best way right now to prevent students from uh, or to ensure your students aren't just copying from one another is to run the reports and just see, um, you know, are students logged in. So, if, for example, if a student goes into an exercise and it's answered in you know, 30 seconds or something like that, but you can see that the student has struggled in other areas and taken a lot longer, 10 minutes or something like that, you could probably ascertain that maybe they received some help. So um, you know, I would just be mindful of that kind of thing, but uh, today we just have our the stock exercises built in. Gotcha. So follow-up question to that, um, can the teachers build their own quizzes and exams? So um, I believe today the answer is no. However, uh, with the Jasper Active installed version on the learning management system I showed you the teacher side, there was a section called activity manager and I didn't go into detail on it, but you have the ability there to create your own customized exercises, which um, you know typically are gonna be multiple choice or fill in the blanks. And then you can assign them to separate areas of the Jasper Active installed version. I think it's completely reasonable to expect that we could connect that functionality with the Jasper Active online uh, release. So the answer is today, it's not there. However, um, I, I, could, I could see something like that being uh, built very quickly and very easily, potentially even time for the October 15th release. Perfect. Um, so I think we've had a few more questions come through, but I did just wanna point people to the fact that um, when we started the pandemic back around April and March, um, we did do a meeting similar to this with Jasper Active and with the team that went through a lot of the functionality of the Jasper Active installed version. So a lot of these questions, I believe, can be answered there. So we'll make sure to send out the link to that recording as well to all of those who are attending today so that you guys can take a look at that. Um, and then, Bob, did you want to make a comment about licensing? Yeah. While we had um, everyone? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Hannah and Curtis. Um, just two quick things because there was a uh, comment about this. So um, <clears throat> somebody asked about the 10 seat license and the um, it, it the ability to get over 10 people concurrently at a time. Um, so normally, as you know, it's if you have a 10 seat license and you have 10 concurrent users at a time, um, but not limited to just 10. Um, Geometrics Jasper Active have waived that currently in this environment um, through the end of this year. So um, if that's the type of license you have and you have two or three classes and they want to get on at the same time, then you have that accessibility. Um, second thing is um, when Curtis was talking about um, having the questions about version and is it gonna be for 2016, just a reminder to everybody that 
um, since this is mostly for uh, students that are at home and they're going to be entering it in, or accessing it on the cloud, might as well use the newest and greatest version of 2019 because we have exams from home and exams from home, you'll be able to take the 2019 version of the exam as well. And uh, neither one, neither Jasper Active nor Certiport will require a download of the office version. So if those of you who have 2016 at work, and at your school, um, but you're teaching kids at home, you can teach the 2019 curriculum and take the tests in 2019 as well. Perfect, Bob. Thanks for great. Thanks, Bob. Helpful. Okay. Um, so we had just a couple questions about where can we get this presentation? Where can we see the follow-up resources or the summary of the tools so that um, those who might not be current customers can make a final decision on when to purchase and how to purchase. Um, we'll be sending that out as follow-up to all of our attendees and all of our registrants. So if you have colleagues maybe who weren't able to attend today, um, you're more than welcome to um, refer them to those resources when we email those out. I did want to clarify, Curtis, where, if we have questions from people who weren't able to get those answered today, what's the best method to connect with the CCI team to be able to get those answered? Yeah, that's great. So the, the first thing I'll mention is just because uh, I do see a question in the chat about, you know, who do I reach out to um, with, with questions, things like that. So um, as you can see on the slide, if you're interested in uh, talking about licensing, pricing, what it looks like, first of all, let me tell you guys, it's super aggressive. I'm really excited to be able to, to, to be extremely competitive with the pricing model. So um, know that and you would contact your territory manager for that. So in this case, uh, the question from Julie, you would want to contact Wyman. Wyman's great. I'm sure you know that. So um, you're in good hands there. Uh, if you have questions about the product that are unclear, um, I would direct you probably first to your territory manager uh, at Certiport because again, they're going to be able to answer um, most of the logistic type questions for you. If you have a product specific question that you feel would be better addressed to either myself or the team here, um, certainly I'll leave my contact information in the chat and you can send me an email um, and I'll make sure it gets answered one way or another.